Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. We had to do take two because I forgot what podcast I was on. Uh, second time that's happened in the last week. But we have uh, an OG guest. Uh, the only time I get to talk to him is I have to invite mm-hmm. him on the podcast because we're he's so busy uh, growing his empire and being a dad. Uh, Eric mm-hmm. Upchurch, how are you doing, sir? What is going on? It's really great to connect with you. And we should make this more of a regular thing, not even on the podcast, just hanging out and talking on the phone. Agreed. So uh, I don't know the exact words, but when you told me your, you know, I, I think I had you on episode two or three. I'm now at four seventy. Wow, like that. time uh, flies. Yeah, time flies. Uh, but you, I want you to say it before we get started. Your why? I yeah. can't remember word verbatim, but still oh, gives me it. chills and shakes me to my core, and it really set the tone for uh, a lot of how I operate. What is it? It is. I serve with the memory and pride of those who've gone before me, for they love to fight, fought to win, and would rather die than quit. It is that deep-rooted why that gives me passion and purpose to keep doing the things I'm doing for the military community and everybody I, I serve around. And anybody that heard that understands why it's still stuck with me over 500 episodes later, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, and, and so, you know, I met most of the guys in your group and yep. we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. And Kevin's a good friend. Uh, I talked to Kevin a bunch. Um, mm-hmm. But but before I get into all that, you know, when I was talking to you, you were buying some apartment. You 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 started buying some apartment. But man, you're doing some really big deals now. Um, some yeah. large uh, storage units. You know, I don't know how. I mean, it's probably like two and a half years ago. But talk about the evolution of your investing career and kind of where you're sitting right as you sit. Well, I'll start by saying I'm not special. I'm not smart. Uh, I'm not certainly not smarter than um, anyone listening to this podcast right now. My my specialty is really grit and um, b- listening to problems and building incredible teams. I think that's one thing I learned in the military or inherently kind of part of who I've always been also is uh, paying attention to who's saying what and how to connect them with it, with the solution. And um so I started, you know, four years ago, getting educated in the commercial or almost five years ago, I guess now in the commercial real estate space, early 2018. And, um, and I just, I was really intentional about being consistent, showing up and uh, adding whatever value I could. And people use that term, but I'm just like everybody else. I'm like, what value do I have? I'm just getting started. I don't know. But my value, I come to find out was just paying attention, showing up and connecting people. I'm a connector of people now. I'm not the best underwriter. I'm not the best asset manager. I'm not the best this or that, but I listen. And when somebody has a problem, I love just part of who I am. I love to find a solution. Even if it's three weeks later or three years later, I'm like, oh, you need to connect with Austin. He does that. He buys boring businesses and -hmm. takes them to the next level. Um, And so that to me, the reason that I've had success in the commercial real estate space and in the military real estate investing space and the kind of philanthropy space um, in my niche is just because I'm paying attention, I'm showing up, and I'm I'm consistently putting myself around really smart people and um, building those teams. Hundred percent, and I think when you, I was in Arizona. I was, I flew in to spend 24 hours with a guy I met on Instagram who was, he's probably one of the biggest investors. Spent the day with him. He has nine businesses. They buy 500 deals a year. Doesn't own a laptop, has five kids. He's just a savage. And we were walking one of his properties. This was, you know, two and a half years ago. And he looked at me and he said, Hey man, I'm I'm staring at the walls. I'm looking out the window of one of his flips. And he looks at me and he goes, Hey, this ain't your game. And I was like, what? He's like, this ain't your game. Get out, man. And I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? And he goes, your game is people. Mm. Do people. 
I don't know what business that is. I don't know what, but your game is people connecting people, being supportive. Do that. Yes. Don't do this. Yep. And it really sent me on a different trajectory in where I sit today. I love that. That's a great perspective. Awesome. And it's hard, right? Because yeah. you're, because you're meeting the guy and you're going, man, he has everything I want. This is how I'm going to get there. And I'll be a hundred percent Frank. And this is where I've come in the last like six months. Real estate bores me. I hate it. And I don't want anything. I'm still going to put my money there. Sure. But it's not going to be where I make the most impact because I realize that small businesses and community is how I can indirectly make a direct impact that cash cash flow. Then I take the cash flow and put it into real estate. Yeah, that's right. And so I've changed my whole the the it's flipped. Now, now it's been a journey to get there, but I've changed my perspective on what I think real estate is. L for me. LP LP investing, passive investing in real estate for the long term goal, right? Passive investing, but also storage facilities through our sure. company. Yep. Stuff like that. We're doing a development on the pro, you know, the 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 business we're buying has 15 acres. Yeah. We're doing a yep. storage. So like we're gonna be building some homes, like stuff like that. But like sure. but like uh, prime example, I talked to one of the bigger syndicators in the country yesterday or before I left Texas and he had 2,600 units and he sold every unit he had, uh, bought a farm and said, I'm tired of dealing with investors. I'm going to change the game. Now I'm going to only invest with two operators. I'm going to be the LP guy now, yeah, but I'm going to yeah. bring all the capital. And so I just think that as you go down the road, I think a lot of people stay in certain aspects of real estate longer because they think it's what they should be doing when there's a real conversation of like, how do you want your lifestyle to be? And yeah. what is it that you actually want to do instead of just doing what the books and the podcast tell you? Yep. I, I am. I am so glad we talked, we're talking about this because that is something on my mind and it has been for many years now, knowing that, you know, I, I want to learn to be a good operator in whichever piece of it that I can fill without, without it feeling heavy. Right. I mm. want it to feel light. I know where I fit in on a team now as a connector and I don't have to be the expert at all mm -hmm. these other little things that are, that bore oh, me to death. Yeah. Right. But my ultimate goal is, is to, to become an LP because time freedom, because, you know, the second mountain is fulfillment. First mountain is achievement. Second mountain is fulfillment. And I'm at, I've hit that plateau where I'm like, okay, I can see that that, that that mountain of achievement is like coming to a head to the point where, you know, I'm 42 years old now and going, well, what do the next 40 years of my life look like? They yeah. look like traveling to see my kids and my mm -hmm. grandkids and doing whatever I want to do and not being, you know, at the beck and call of my investors or my partners or this or that. So I, I mean, I think maybe that's a natural cycle for someone, but, the, but you and I see people also who are just, this is my gig. I'm grinding. I'm building vertical, you know, put building in property management companies and building in this and building in that to build out their system. And that's good for them. But I think like you am, I'm not bored by real estate, but I am, I, well, I'm more efficient with people than I am with systems. One of the things that also hit me in that same kind of walk, it must've been a good walk, uh, was I only want to run races. I can't win. For the rest yes. of my life. Yes. And and small business is one of those things. The complexity oh, of the human emotion and the employees and the structuring of the crazy deal with the owner finance. I only want to get on board with races. I can't win. Yeah. And that's my theme for Dude, the rest of my life. Can we get literal with that for a second? Yes. Because because I uh, I just did a, a 70.3 Ironman with no training. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. co cold turkey in December. Mm -hmm. I don't run, I don't bike, and I don't swim. Mm -hmm. First time I'd ever done a triathlon was the Ironman. First time I'd ever swam with a, a wetsuit on was when I jumped into that lake. Mm -hmm. And running races, you can't win, is part of doing hard things, which I, I love. I, and, I, and part of my, my we just started with my, my kind of purpose in life, my why, I, which starts with service. And so I serve with the memory and pride when I'm going through an arduous, hard, you know, half Ironman type of event, I'm thinking about them and I'm thinking about finishing the race for them. And if that correlates to business, it correlates to relationships, it correlates to physical, physically difficult feats, you know, I do the things that I do for 
the six brothers that I buried for the 19 we lost in the six years that I served in special operations. So physically doing hard things. I told my wife, um, you know, I said, I'm asking you to allow me to do two hard things per year that do take some, some prep. Like if I'm going to raise money for veterans community project, you know, it takes a little bit of prep. If I'm going to hike Mount Whitney, if I'm going to like, we just circumnavigated Lake Tahoe 170 miles last year and raised $190,000 for, for veterans community project. That was one of the physically hardest things I've ever done. Mm -hmm. It was 28,000 feet of elevation up and 28,000 feet of elevation down over nine days with 20, with 40 pounds on our back, 20 miles a day. And, you know, it was gratifying, but very difficult. But so doing hard things that you can't win, there's no, there's no medal at the end of it. And, mm -hmm. and oftentimes in business and in life, there's actually no end. Yeah. You just keep going because you have passion and purpose. And that, in that same kind of two week span, uh, actually it took like six months when we, before we embarked on this thing six months ago, I knew and I had multiple conversations with myself, I knew what I was asking out of myself. And I, I had to get real. Do I want a six-figure business? The life that everybody says you should have, working four days a month, and I could just be satisfied and jerk, you know, play golf the rest of the time. Because I knew that having, you know, I have 30 employees now, and that's just getting started. Tomorrow, I'll buy another company, uh, a little tuck-in. Like I'm probably going to have, you know, north of a thousand employees before we get here. And there's, there's responsibilities and there's emotions and all this stuff. And I said to myself, do you, do you really want this? Is this, is this a thing? Right. And I don't think enough people take enough time, right? One of the, my greatest gifts I give to my clients, and this is a gift that I can give to everybody else is the 48 hour, no decision. We've created a world where you have to have the answer and the decision right away. But if you get some distance from it and not allow yourself to make a big decision for 48 hours, you'd be amazing what would come up. Oh, nice. Yeah. And they're like, I don't understand. I'm like, no, you're not allowed to. Like, is the world going to fall apart in 48 hours? No. And you're going to get some distance from it. And it's not, you're not going to make an emotional decision. And one of the things that's really hard for me is emotion is what drives me. And it's what gives me passion and energy and all that stuff. But it also can ruin you know, these are big decisions with big, you know, as the dollar amounts go up, there's, you gotta, you gotta have a little distance from it. You gotta respond the right way. But, and one of the things that on that, on that vein is that if you can't be professional and you want to come at me with some BS, you're just blocked. I just not even gonna, I'm not even gonna entertain the game anymore. Yeah. And that's whole like six month thing has been one thing and one thing only. I'm not selling anything anymore i'm not selling you something you don't have to buy anything if you like the vision and you want to get on board great there's a seat for you and make it and i feel like active duty passive income is kind of the same way we're not selling ourselves anymore this is a community of amazing people that are yeah. going to lift you up they're going to give you the tools necessary but i can't do it for you and so many times I feel like, especially early in my career, it's like, I just don't understand. You don't want to get sober. You don't want to do better for your life. I'm done. I'm done with that. I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think, this, like you said, I just turned 40, you know, two months ago. There's a lot of things changed You're in a different season of my life. Uh, and I think when you get to that place, then you can make the time and those decisions for you and your family and say, you know, this is really what I need. And there's different times when Eric can be available, but there's times when Eric doesn't need to be available. Yep. And I think, I think that's a, it's a great place to get to. Man, it's, it's something that, um, I, uh, so I just joined, um, uh, go abundance. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about this first event I went to was a bunch of men in this, in, in this masterminds, all men, and, uh, a bunch of men who I could completely relate to on the stuff you're talking about. It's like, hustle, 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 but wait, stop. Everyone think about this for a second. Once you've achieved a certain level of success, whatever that is, whatever that means to the person, there's more. There's, it's not about that anymore. It's not, it shouldn't be about that maybe in the first place, unless you're just trying to pursue your passion, but what now? So one, one takeaway, for instance, 
was I need to leave my phone in my office at five or 6 PM when my family knows that it's family time. I also need to recognize that's family time. So kind of on a smaller scale, yeah, there's, there's noise, but in my head, there's also noise in an entrepreneur's head. There's also, if I'm sitting there with my kids and playing, uh, doing a puzzle or playing a game around the table, what's in my head? Am I present or is there noise of like, okay, we're closing that deal on the 15th. We got to make sure the wire's going through. We got to do this. We got to do that. Or am I thinking about how they're feeling about the game? And am I talking about what they have going on? And so um, tuning out that noise on the family level, for sure, but also in business, you, you have to feed your brain. You have to feed, like if I see somebody post something negative on social media, they're gone. Yeah. And not because I don't like them, because I don't have time for that type of input. Yeah, don't have time for it. I, I literally <laughs> don't have time. Like I, I can't, I can't see that input. I'm mean, choosing not to, even if I really care for the person, mm-hmm. I can't feel that negative energy when I'm looking at things that I'm trying to intentionally feed my brain. And Facebook to me is a tool. It is not a place to go connect with my high school buddies. Mm-hmm. So um, I've got, well, I've got to make sure. Well, it's, that, it's, um, it's a, con- it's a concern, right? Because yeah. you and I are going to have, it's the same thing's going to happen to us. You're going to be hanging out with your family at 52 years old. And somebody's going to DM you and go, man, how'd you do it? And you're going to say, I've been saying the same shit for 20 years. <laughs> uh, overnight success, right? Yeah. 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 And you know what's crazy is the seller of the company, the wife asked me, she's like, what do we do with all this money? I go, I don't know. You tell me. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm the guy over here that's got to go make it work. I don't know. Yeah. You know it was such a, it was such a like, aha moment for me. Do you yeah. like to golf? I don't know. You want me to find a hobby for you also? <laughs> I gave you this money. Now you got to yeah. go figure, figure it out on your own. No, but it, but it's, but what happened though, in this process after getting divorced and, you know, selling off properties and kind of, you know, having seven boxes to my name. And and just so we're clear, the first ever car I got that wasn't a hand-me-down was 30 days ago. Awesome. I'm 40, I'm 40 years old. And the only reason I got that is because I have a 45 foot you know, RV and I needed a ridiculous truck yeah. and we're buying the company and the company bought the truck. Cause it's still, I still didn't buy it, but yeah. like, but that, but I, but I understand. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, you got the RV, you got the truck. Okay. You're good. Like a little land and a house and like, okay, like what else is there that I really want to buy? Like a speedboat. Cause I love the lake, but that's about it. So it's like, okay, you have those five things. That's about it. Yeah. Simple. And it's, and so I don't understand what everybody needs all this stuff for. Yeah. Well, uh, it's funny because uh, David Osborne was talking at the at the event last week in Tahoe. And interesting to hear him talk about his, you know, hitting his numbers. It used to be 50 million and then it was 100 million. And, and now he's at, you know, he's 50 something years old and he's going, that's enough. Like you can't even spend that much money. Mm-hmm. I mean- it would be hard by the time that you make the interest back on that you've made, you know, by the time you spent it, you've made that money back on the interest, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're investing it right. So yeah, it was just kind of great to have these refreshing conversations with people who are streamlining life and trying to figure out what's, what's important. And, you know, that's, that's partially why I, in 29, December, 2019, I started saying, as, as much as I could, like I'm going to start donating houses to homeless veterans. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you this, we've, we've collectively, we've taken the veteran homelessness population from 38,000 in 2020 to 32,000 um, in 2022. So it's, this is a solvable problem and mm-hmm. I'm just completely honored to be, uh, you know, a cog in the wheel. Absolutely amazing. I mean, cause then then the direct impact of, of something that you had in mind created, you're watching it, you know, trend the other way. Yeah. Right? And, 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 you know, by product of all that is the goodwill in the community. Uh, the, the group's getting bigger, they're getting help. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's like, there's an AA group at the church here in town. And I was like, I can't wait to go speak to those people. And it's like, I never went to AA, but like, but what did it for me, man, was like my last trip up here three weeks ago, I was leaving. And the office manager looked me dead in the eye and he said, hey, man, 
you're bringing to this area what it's been missing for a couple of years. And I was like, what's that? Oh, he goes, awesome. Heart. Love it. Heart. He said, you don't have any biased view. You're just in here. This is the right thing to do. Do the right thing. Right. And I think, yeah. I think so many times we know the right thing to do, but yet we let, you know, others opinions or whatever. It's like, just go, just go forge your own path. And I promise you, you're going to yep. come out ahead. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So, so when you, you know, how do you, I guess that's the topic that is probably good to talk about on every podcast. You know, you got a, kids, you got a wife, you, you got the group, you got the business, you got all these different things that you're doing. You know, how do you juggle everything and how do you make sure that you set proper boundaries for your life? Well, the, the real answer is I don't do a good job at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, it's a, it's a struggle for me and, and I see my home relationships aren't as good as they could be because I, I live in my own kind of business bubble, you know, of like, but it's like filled with passion and vigor and love and, mm -hmm. and outreach and connectivity and all the things that really keep me kind of out of my own head. And I say this relatively frequently that like, you know, as a military member with TBI and PTSD coming out and like real estate and just, let me say this passion and purpose, a renewed sense of passion and purpose. And my, the camaraderie that I have with the team of military members and stuff that probably saved my life. And most military members transitioning need something like that. And so I find it to be a very warm thing to be busy and not in a non-productive busy way. Cause you can be that too, but we're making progress, which feeds that kind of ego also of like, mm -hmm. wow, this is great for me. And this is great for other people. And it's great for everybody. Right. But what, what it's not great for is balance. And some people say there's no such thing as balance. And I'm kind of starting to believe that it's like, well, you're either shutting your phone off at 5 p.m. and spending time with your family who deserve it, or you're not engaged and your family relationships are going to suffer. And I have, my wife is fantastic. We've been married 18 years and my kids are awesome and they think the world of me and I think the world of them also, but it could be much better. And I recognize that. And so the way I keep it together is um, I... On, to be honest, I, I have amazing teams of people and I do one sliver of the things that I need to do to be a part of that team. Otherwise, there's no way I'd be able to be coaching and have a W-2 and have five businesses under ADPI and have my own real estate portfolio and a wife and kids. There's no way I'd be able to do any of that if I didn't have awesome people doing the majority of, of the work. And I'm just doing my Part. I'm adding my piece of value that I know how to do in each one of those kind of departments. So uh, it's a it's a it's a bit of a a grind. It's not gonna it's not gonna last forever. One of my theme this year is get light, and that means to me doing the things that I'm like they don't feel heavy. They feel like ah, love that. Uh, and also learning to say no to opportunities. It's, it's once you do deal zero to one or buy business zero to one, that first one, Dude. it's the hard one. Right. And then yeah. after that, you're like, well, there's another one. There's another one. I mean, anybody who's in business knows that this is how it goes because someone goes, Oh, Austin just bought that one. He'll probably want this one too. And then he wants this one. And then he wants that one. Mm -hmm. So the deals come, the opportunities come no matter what niche you're in, but you've got to learn at some point to say, that's, that's not my niche. That's not my lane. I don't have time for that. I appreciate the opportunity, maybe next time, so that you can focus on some of the things that do matter, which are relationships and purpose and philanthropy and getting light, you know? So that same guy I was talking about earlier, so he has nine businesses. Uh, he doesn't own a laptop. He works from nine to one every day, Monday through Thursday. That's it. Um, and I asked him, I said, you know, what percentage, he said, Austin, the greatest and this is for you. He said, the greatest gift that I understood is like, so let's say the pie is a hundred percent. He said, my team does 98% yeah. of everything. He said, but my 2% feels like 400%. Yeah. Because only I can do that 2%, yeah. which is network, put people together. Yeah. And he goes, when I realized that if I ever step out of that 2%, 
we're headed down a, the wrong path or they're telling me to get out. And so when he hit home in that 1%, then he gets to be the dad he wants to do. He gets to be all that stuff. And and so for me, it's very pointy that we're talking about this and she'll listen to this because I'll send it to her right afterwards. Two weeks ago, I was in Dallas with some friends at an entrepreneurship event. We were playing golf with a client and one of my best friends who owns a bunch of businesses too. We were going golfing at his, at his country club and it was like, it was like nine and he like did something on his phone. And I was like, what, what, what did you just do? And he's like, well, I just forwarded my calls to my chief of staff. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, I mean, I, so we can just go play golf and I can hang out with you guys. I'm like, I don't, I'm just, what, what, what's going on? So I didn't think anything of it. Well, I had to answer like 10 calls where we're on the golf course. And he like pulls me aside after golf and he's like, Hey man, uh you need you need chief of staff you need an assistant this is getting ridiculous and i was like really and he's like yeah he's like actually i know the i know the perfect person so i called her like that afternoon hired her on the spot (laughs) so she started like two weeks ago and she goes on full time in march uh and it's life-changing i I don't and and we're not even doing that much right now Mm -hmm. but just to have somebody there deep in the trenches with me to support me and i support her I mean, it's going to change my entire life. Absolutely. You know, and it's, but like as an entrepreneur, like it's also the scariest thing in the world. And so I'm like, and so I'm like, listen, I've already played this game before. Okay. With three other people. I said, never worked. You want to know why it didn't work? Because I picked the exact opposite of me. And while that's great and what I need, I'm too much for them. They can't understand me. I said, you're me. We're the same person. I said, you have to pull what's out of here. And you have to figure it out. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm sorry. I'm bad at it, right? This is what happens last week, dude. I get an email on Friday. And she goes, everything, because we have a Slack owner channel. Mm-hmm. She goes, everything you put in Slack, I got all of it. I organized it in an email. Here you go. Send it out to the owners. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, here I, here I am running and gunning all week. I'm not, you yeah. know, it's a blur. Yep. And she's like, was that help? And all the other owners are like, thank you so much. This is such great communication. And I'm like, ah. you know, it's like yes. in euphoria. Yeah. So it's oh, like when it. you find that right person, it's like, dude, yes. Like, it's so amazing. Yeah. I just started uh, compiling a list of, um, it's actually in my inbox and on put it on my, my uh, to-do board over here of what a, what a uh, personal assistant would do. I actually love the chief of staff kind of. No, no, no. I don't like the mind. word. I, I don't I like actually, the word. I don't like the word assistant, so I refuse yeah, to use it. Yeah, I I agree. So, um, people have said personal assistant, executive assistant, uh, office man. I mean, there's all kinds of terms, right? Chief of staff to me. I mean, it resonates from kind of mm-hmm. the background that mm-hmm. I come from. But that is an ownership type yeah. of mm-hmm. level of responsibility mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. get in my head, figure out what I mean and deduce the correct answer or response or action. Well, well, and you'll love this because you're, you're going through it. So what I thought I needed, right? I bet read Rocket Fuel, Rocket Fuel five times. Okay? Mm-hmm. So I thought I need the exact opposite. Here's the problem. I can't get out of my head to them to understand it in their analytical mind. So what I need to do is somebody pull it out of my head, then to Maestro, yeah. Yeah. send it out. So somebody, instead of you creating the SOP, talking to somebody and having them build the SOP. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's like, great. it's the same way they're writing books now. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah. okay, you Ghost can't write, and... but like, just talk to me. Right. Yeah, and so, yeah. and so, it, it, and, and the thing is, is like, that's, so that's, that's great. And all that I said was great, but that's not the actual problem. The actual problem is that you and I have to stare in the mirror and look at ourselves and say, we deserve that person. Ooh, yeah, that's right. Right. That, cause we, you and I carry that stick and we want to, we want to, we're the warriors, right? Yeah. But if we want to go where we're going, which is wealth creation across multiple states, have to, have to. And, and, and there's going to be a situation, dude, where we onboard a company and I have nothing to do with it. And, and just saying it right now makes me sweat and mm-hmm. makes me, well, I'm not going to get the credit, like <laughs> all that, you know? And it's like, so like I told him, I was like, I, so this happened. I interviewed CEOs for six months, like top, I'm talking the top of the top, like, bro, I'm flying out to Nashville 
to meet with these guys head on. I'm talking about dudes, 30, 40 years experience. And I thought to myself, I was driving by myself at like late at night after like nine meetings in a row. And I was like, it can't be them. It can't be them. They're not invested the way I'm invested. Yeah. When I get this thing to 25 million, then that needs the guy that's going to take it from 25 to 100 because that ain't me. Mm-hmm. But this needs a shot in the arm. This needs passion. This needs fire. This needs somebody that's ready to get their hands dirty, step in shit. That's what it needs. Yeah, and you so, need to take it from five to 25 million. Exactly. So how do, you, how do you find that CEO? No, that's me. Okay, I decided so that, that was my question. Okay, that was, yeah. that was my next. I decided, question. and I literally told a guy that I was fighting the biggest private equity firms in the country against and we and i said hey man i would love to hire you i would love to have you but the time is just not right yeah and i said i hope you respect and he goes dude you have no idea how much i respect this shit and he goes you need anything i'm i'm here for you just call me i couldn't have handed him where we are it needs too much elbow grease and too much you know in the trenches He's looking for a he's looking for a sports car. Mm-hmm. I got a 16 passenger van with a busted wheel. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, and so it, but but I had to get my fiance to sign off on moving across the country and knowing what I'm invested in for two years and moving yeah. to the middle of nowhere and all this stuff. Yeah. But like I just fucking love it though, man. Yeah, you're gonna I be mean, the you're gonna be the mayor of this town though. I mean, how <laughs> Oh, I just love it though. That? And yeah. the moment that I, the moment that I made the decision, the team was behind it because, because here's what they don't talk about Eric, And you know, this, cause you're, you, you, you have a big, I still wake up with sweats. I have an entire, I don't just have my employees on my back and my owners and the money investors, their families. I got everybody on the back, everybody. But I said, coach, I want the fucking rock. Everything leading up to my career is this, is right now. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit if I don't know about HVAC and plumbing. I know people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's and great. I can manage the shit out of this. Right. And so when you take on those opportunities in your life, you have to own and carry the responsibility the same way you're carrying the burden and responsibility for any homelessness in vets. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that's a big deal. And I, I don't think enough people take time to really understand what they're stepping their foot into. They're saying yes, or they're agreeing to this partnership, or they're jumping into this deal, or they're, oh, well, now, now I'm going to do wholesaling anymore. I'm going to do Airbnb now. Now I'm going to do multifamily. Now I'm going to do much. It's like, dude, just like pick something, own it, crush it, and then you own, you earn the right to move on to the next thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm reading uh, Good to Great right now. Uh, oh, my God. And um, I just read it a month ago. It's the yeah, best I'm thinking. Book I've ever I'm read. thinking. Of, thinking of you doing this thing. I'm like, okay, I get it. You, you, you got to be the CEO right now. And what you need to prepare for, obviously, is mm-hmm. a successor. Right? Well, which is what, well, which is what you're, which is what well, here's you're preparing what happened, to do. Well, here's what happens when that happens. Now, now we don't have to hope they pick us. We get to pick them. Yeah, changes everything. Yeah, and so look, let I. You're talking to the guy. If this thing's going past 25 million, which which it will, way past, I ain't your guy. Yeah. You need you need steady Eddie, a I'm professional gonna... CEO. <laughs> a professional CEO <laughs> that is an entrepreneur like, CEO, that is, business that, builder. That is, that is like that is like seen it, done it, yeah. managed a thousand people, knows that this game is about day in, day yeah. out, just hitting the bullseye. Mm-hmm. But if you want me to go find the businesses, you want me to go stir up the opportunities, you want me to go get the guys motivated, I'm your guy, right? And I think this is what this whole conversation has been about, like finding your lane, owning it, but then knowing when to get off the ride. And injecting heart into it, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. I don't even want to get, I don't even know if I want to stir up this horse's nest, but um I guess one of the things, and I'm not a military guy, but I've probably got half my staff is ex-military. And this might stir up a real horn's nest. I find it, you know, very interesting that we've become a, we become a society of, we'll deal with it when they've hit the barrier doing 170, Hmm. but there's no preemptive work there's no preemptive work with the soldiers there's no preemptive work with the alcoholics like yeah 
is that why y'all created this program? Because it's kind of the best laid solution that exists right now. And there's, you know, in the kind of cleaning up the mess that's been left. I, I, it's so frustrating. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've heard me say that before, but it's it's like the the aftermath is is plain sight to civilians and military members of veteran suicide and veteran homelessness and you know veterans inherently seeking the the dopamine hits that they wanted and all that stuff after service and just biology taking over like i had this thing now i don't have it all of a sudden and how do i get that well it's getting arrested it's jumping off a building it's you know suicide it's destructive behavior and alcoholism drug abuse that happens to military members biologically without notice because it's like withdrawal leaving the military right yeah. um but what we're doing at active duty passive income is one tiny sliver of what can be done which is creating a new sense of camaraderie a new sense of passion new sense of purpose a transition point into something else where you actually matter and you're hanging out with your brothers and sisters in arms that speak mm -hmm. the same language as you Mm -hmm. That alone, just having that tiny fraction of a brotherhood or sisterhood, oh man, it makes all the difference. Knowing that you're in a community and it doesn't matter if it's my, like my niche obviously is military, uh, military and real estate investing, but your niche could be anything. I don't care if you're, you know, playing with Barbie dolls, whatever that common thread is, and you can speak the same language as another person that you served with. That will help that transition. It will reduce the amount of suicides. It'll it'll increase the amount of hopefulness in in people seeing their future. A lot of times, military members can't see themselves in the future because they're they're stuck in the past and and struggling with the current. So, yeah, it's we're I'm glad to say that we're one example of a community that will help a military member transition. We actually just got approved um, as a DoD Skill Bridge partner. So the Department of Defense. Um, and anyone can do this. It's a little bit of a lengthy application process, but a company can uh, sign up for, and there's, I think, over 2,000 companies in the U.S. right now. So a, the DOD will continue to pay a service member that's leaving the military up to six months of military pay while they intern for my company. Okay. So we get to hire interns that are active duty military paid by the DOD. We pay them nothing actually not allowed to pay them anything. They come work for us for six months and then they get a clean transition from the military into nice. some line of work in whether it's content creation or blog writing or um, education building or whatever it is, real estate investing, whatever it is that we do, we can train as many people as we want. We get a free workforce for six months. They get the opportunity to potentially transition into our company as a full-time hiree or even as a 1099. And so just another opportunity for people to take transitioning military members and really help them out. Um, and, and when you like you're hiring military members and you have military members on mm -hmm. uh, or uh, veterans on staff, these are people that want to be there. They want to know what, what uniform to wear, when to show mm -hmm. up, what to mm -hmm. look like. They want to know what the checklist is. They want to follow it and they want to go home to their family and, yeah. and go and do it again the next day. So if mm -hmm. you, if you can provide them with some structure, they are some of the best employees on the planet. Yep. As a, my two favorite hires are recovery and military. You bet. There's some yeah. drive behind that. So if people want to find out about the group, the podcast, all that yeah. stuff, how would they do that? Yeah, you can go to um, activedutypassiveincome.com. Um, if you want to join the group, it's militaryrealestateinvesting.com. We've got uh, about 70,000 members right now and um, about an 80% engagement rate in there. People are thrilled to be there changing lives uh, about 90 percent of what we do is free and um, you know just hoping to get as many military members on the right track as possible and take advantage of their benefits yeah if you if you haven't checked it out guys and you're a military you 100 percent need to check it out i think it's the best group uh in that space by my miles uh everybody i've met has been so nice but if you got some value from this episode send it to a friend and we'll see you next time